Hello, my name's Caitlin. I'm a proud Gomorrah woman and artist behind Miri Art. My family are the Trindles. We're from a little country town in northwest New South Wales called Narrabri. For me, um, art has always been a massive part of my life forever. Um, both my parents are really arty crafty. Mum, I remember being little and doing so much art and crafts with mum. And then my dad is a really good um, artist and, you know, paints, he paints and he draws. So I think I've got my passion for anything creative from both of my parents. Um, however, the things that I um, treasure most in my life are the pieces of artwork that have been passed down by my late grandfather, um, my Poppy Trindle. So he has made beautiful pieces, he's made didgeridoos, he's carved and painted boomerangs, carved emu eggs, um, you know, painted rocks and the things that he's gifted to me over the years have been so special um, and he's a massive reason why I have decided to pursue this creative um, passion of mine and so for me creating art started back in 2016 when my grandfather became quite sick and you know being in touch with um, with my culture through my artwork was actually a way that I was able to connect with him even though we were physically distanced um, you know me being in Sydney and him in Narrabri all of the art that I do goes under the word, the name Miri Art. The word Miri is a very um, significant and inspirational word for me. The word actually means star in the traditional language of my people in Gamilaray. Um, and the word was actually chosen because in, back in 2017, when my poppy passed away, uh, my younger brother Matt and our cousins performed a beautiful smoking ceremony at his funeral and one of our cousins spoke about the way that this um, the way that this smoking ceremony was sending him back up with our ancestors um, back up into the stars and so that that word stars ha you know has such an um, important meaning for me and I feel so connected to him both you know when it's just clear skies and you look up and you just you know, you're, you see the stars and you feel with him. And then I also feel so connected to him when I am creating. So creating, um, you know, in terms of doing, you know, paintings on canvas or whether it's making earrings or doing a mural with kids out of school, like that for me is all a part of my healing process and a part of that um, connection to, to country and to my family and my community. Um, and our culture and spirit and it's um, it's a beautiful process. To me, NADOC week is, um, it's a time of pride and it's a time for celebration and it's a time for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to be loud and proud and to have our voices heard the way that they should be heard. Um, it's a time for truth telling and open conversation and, and not just amongst ourselves as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but to the nation more broadly. And it's this truth telling that um, that is so powerful in our journey towards reconciliation and, and towards healing as a nation. Um, you know, I think that we need more of this truth telling. When when I was at school, we, we didn't really get taught the truth, right? We, we got taught things and it was kind of swept under the carpet and um, a little bit, you know, sugar coated and now, for example, like I'm going out into preschools and I'm working with kids from two years old and they're, you know, at their preschool, they're learning about an acknowledgement of country and they are loud and proud when they, when they say their acknowledgement every morning. And that's the kind of steps forward that we need to be taking. Uh, we need to, we need to take this seriously and something that it should be celebrated. It should be celebrated all the time, not just on NATO week, but it, but NATO week gives us, gives the whole nation a specific time where these conversations are taking place and they're very real and they're very raw and they need to be heard. So um, it's it's a time, yes, for celebration and for reflecting. Um, this year's theme is always was, always will be. And that statement is, is very powerful, right? We have been here on this land for over 65,000 years and we are strong and we are proud and we stand together. And, you know, we, our, our elders and our ancestors have fought for the opportunities that we get to have today. Um, the opportunity for even for me to be able to sit here on this beautiful land and create for you guys and show you, you know, share a little, a tiny part of my culture with you. That's because of the fights that they have had for us. So always has, always will be, is so powerful. 
So that's a bit about me. Um, what we're going to do now is move on to actually creating a, an emu feather jewellery set. So we're going to make these beautiful earrings um, that have been sourced you know, naturally sourced. So we've got emu feathers, we've got native um, kwandong seeds and native sandalwood seeds. And then we're also going to make a beautiful matching necklace as well. Enjoy. Today we're going to be making a pair of these emu feather earrings. So we've got a whole bunch of different um, natural resources and materials that we're going to be using today. We've got some beautiful emu feathers. So these have come from um, an emu farm up in Narrabri, which is where I've said that my mob are from. Um, emu feathers are pretty special in that one feather actually has like two feathers attached to it. So we kind of getting double the amount of feathers in our earrings. Um, it also means that when it comes to actually putting the earrings together, we can make them pretty much symmetrical by just splitting the one feather in half. So we've got our beautiful feathers. We also then have our seeds. So we're going to be using both um, sandalwood seed as well as kwandong seed. So the sandalwood seeds have a smoother finish and you will then see the kwandong seed, which has a bit of a rippled and very textured effect. Um, you can place them however you like, but I'll show you how, um, how I usually make them. I'll start then by showing you some of the actual tools that we're needing to put these together. So probably the most important one, we're going to need a set of pliers. Um, so I get the ones with the thin nose and that's so that um, I'll show you later, but we can maneuver our materials pretty quickly and pretty easily with these because they're nice and thin. We then have uh, the first thing that we'll be putting um, together is the base of our earring. So the part where the feathers actually are attached to the earring itself. Okay, so now for the fun part, we're going to put our feathers together to make the base part of our earring. So like I said before, we're just going to grab um, the, I like the fluffy feathers, you may not, that's okay. Um, and we're going to, I would suggest have about set six to seven feathers in each earring. And the only reason we're limiting it to that is because we need to be able to fit it inside of our crimping tool, which I will show you in a moment. So I've gone ahead and selected uh, my six or seven feathers to go in my earrings. Something that I am noting is that some of our feathers or quite a lot of them have a natural curve to them. Um, now we can't stop that, that's part of the natural bird. But what we do want to do is make sure that our curves are all going in the same direction for the earring. Otherwise, we're kind of going to, um, they're going to be spreading out. It doesn't quite look as neat for you. So the only way that we can kind of tackle that situation is we're just going, when we actually hold them up, we're just making sure that we're holding them all up so that they are, you know, naturally curving in the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with mine now. Um, so I've got some long feathers in here and some a little bit shorter. What you are then going to do is you're going to hold them all together and you're going to place them inside of your crimp tool. So your crimp has a little loop at the top. You wanna to make sure that that is kept free so that, cause we're going to be attaching more things into that later. So you're just going to lay the feathers down inside of your crimp tool with the hole up the very top. Then with our pliers, we're just going to gently push down each side of our crimp. So we're not, we're not sandwiching them together. We're going one at a time over each other like a book. Just do them now. Eat a little bit fiddly. Perfect. So we've crimped them together. That's our first step. Now you might see that I've got some of the, the tip of the feathers is actually coming up a little bit too high. That's okay, we will get rid of them. That's what we're using the, the inside scissor section of our pliers for. So we're just gonna put, pull them back and cut off the excess just so that it's not in the way anymore. 
just... Perfect. Okay, our next step is we are going to attach one of our eye pins to this section. That is going to be what actually holds our feathers to the top of the earring. So this is really what holds it all together. So it's, a, it's basically just a little pole that has a, a loop on top. What you're going to do with your pliers is gently open up the loop just a little bit. So it's kind of a candy cane shape. You're then going to pop that straight through our loop that's in the top of our crimp. So it just gently slides in and then we have to re-close it back together so that it doesn't fall out. So just gently pushing them back in together. So we've got our feathers and we've got our post and our next step now is to choose the seeds that we want to be putting on top. So I normally pick uh, one sandalwood seed and one kwandong seed. Um, this again is something that you're going to want the seeds on each earring to be even. So um, again, you can do it however you like. I usually prefer to have the bigger seed on the bottom, um, but that's just me. So we start with, um, you know, choosing your seed. These seeds have actually been, I bought them online um, as just a full seed. And then my fabulous partner has drilled each and every one of them individually. Um, so they, these ones here are ready to go. So you just pop them both on, oops. <laughs> without dropping. Pop them both on top and we're nearly there. Then what we're going to do is bend a 90 degree just so that it's not going to move around on you. So we've got it nice and sturdy. We're then taking our hook. Um, we are not opening our hook. We are just threading it straight through now it is still it is still too long so again with our pliers we are going to give it a bit of a trim just so that we don't have any of that excess just trim that then what we're doing is we're just going to loop it back over on top of itself and that's going to form its own loop um, to keep the hook nice and sturdy for you so we're just pushing that in And then we're done. We have our beautiful, oh, just spin it. You've got your own beautiful native seed earrings. So as well as our beautiful emu feather earrings, we're also going to um, make a necklace. So the process is very, very similar to what we did with our earrings, but a little bit less fiddly. So we're going to start the exact same way. So you're going to find the right emu feathers for you. Um, given that it's a necklace, lots of people will have it, have it quite a bit longer than our, um, than our earrings. We also have, it's a tool that's very much the same, but just slightly bigger um, for our necklace, which means that we can actually fit a few more feathers in there. So with our earrings, we could only fit about six or seven. Now we can fit about eight to nine feathers in there. So it can be a little bit thicker. So same process as last time, we're going to hold them nice and closely together with the loop still up the top. And we're going to grab our pliers and clamp them all in. Again, with our excess, we're just going to trim that off. Perfect. Now this time um, goes through, um, our loop is actually our cord. So that's what's going to be going around your neck. This one is a waxed cord. Um, it is nice and thin and it will glide. So what we're going to do is cut it. <laughs> cut it on an angle firstly actually so that you get that nice um, smooth tip to it. We're gonna put, push it through and you're going to cut it 
as long as you want it. So I like my necklace nice and long for these. So I'm going to cut it, giving us plenty of room. I'll hold it up in a moment. So it's super long and I'm just doing it that long so we have enough to play with. Um, you can always trim it down later. What we're going to do next is grab our, um, our sandalwood seed and our kwandong seed, again, in whatever order you like. Uh, we might this time do our kwandong seed at the bottom. So what we're going to do, it's important that we actually take the tips of both ends of our string or rope both of them go in at the same time. The reason for that, I will show you. Once they're in. The reason is once we pull it, it'll hang in the middle. And that's the look that you're going for. So you're going to put the Kwandong seed in first. Then we just replicate that again with our sandalwood seed. So I've picked one that's slightly smaller. Oops, thread them through. And there's, but we're nearly done. So all we have to do now, I usually just tie a little knot at the top of our seeds just to hold them in place. Um, otherwise, when you're wearing it, your seeds might jump up and down a little bit. So we'll just tie that together, pull the tie down nice and tight. And then you just decide how long you want your necklace. So for me, I like mine probably to sit around there. So I'm just holding it and where I have held it is exactly where I'm going to tie it. I would suggest a double knot just to be certain. You can even put a dab of glue on there as well, just to make sure it's not gonna rub against your neck and, and come apart without you knowing. And there's your necklace. Nice and easy, that one. <laughs>